Exactamente como lo hacemos todo el tiempo. Irma Sierra can help her son Alfonso at home. Okay. Because of what La they do at school. Lapis. The work is done. Había mucha. In the language she can understand. Hijo, esta, esta e no parece e. Pero como les enseña. They teach them how to mix the language and how to respect the language of their birth. La trajora. Alfonso is a second grader. Maestra, ¿qué razón? At Greenwood Academy in far northeast Denver. What I like about the school that I get to learn about, I get to learn about everything. He gets to learn in a school where 86% of all students are Latino. So Greenwood started a dual language program where teachers like Monica Rico teach core subjects in Spanish. When the kids start off with their native language at school, uh, they can get that parental support at home. When a parent is aware of what's happening at school and has good communication with their child, the child is more successful. El niño tiene mejor éxito. Our schools follow the patterns of housing segregation in, in our city. Superintendent Tom Bosberg okay, does everybody have a says that while schools like Alfonso's do their best, I'm doing another ladybird. It is an issue that they're not more diverse. And I believe, and our students very strongly believe in, in the importance of integration. Bosberg says since many neighborhoods are racially isolated, the district is trying enrollment zones versus neighborhood schools. I need an outline of that spiral. School boundary lines are redrawn, prompting parents to choose from a wider variety of schools in a bigger area. If you draw those circles a little bit bigger, uh, you, bring, you, you can bring in much greater uh, diversity, both economically and, and racially. Alfonso School is about 90% low-income families, too. Talent isn't distributed by income or by race. At the same time, privilege in this country often is. I know that we have a great team of social workers and uh, teachers that if they know that a student is struggling or needs something, they will come together to help that student and their family. Denver Public Schools also launched a program called Success Express, providing an ongoing circular transportation system to help kids attend schools further from home. And at the same time, transportation is expensive. Uh, that every bus on the road is a, a teacher who we don't have in our classroom. Where would I find my product? The dilemma is that while the district tries to integrate schools, and that is called our product, students and parents at Greenwood like going to a school where almost everyone has the same background. I like the organization of the school's personnel and that I can go to the building, talk to staff, and with the principal. How do we balance these competing values? Uh, how do we make choices that are win-win choices uh, for the students and families in our communities? Being in an environment where, where there's more people that speak your same language obviously makes you feel more comfortable and it makes you feel more free in a way because you can express your ideas. <laughs> Making school feel like home for Alfonso. There are definitely schools where you can't do that, where you cannot feel like a family, like I do at this school. While the district tries to make school There's no one right answer. feel like the world. Nelson Garcia, 9 News. Do me a favor and here's what you need to do. There's nothing typical about Diane Haynes' AP Calculus class. Yeah, so you should bring that up and rewrite it. At Harrison High School in Colorado Springs. Uh, next eight minutes, I should not hear your voice. In fact, the numbers show there's nothing typical about the Harrison School District. And I'm going to make it negative because I mean like that. When it comes to being mostly minority, mostly low-income families. Especially in this district, from what I've seen, I don't see very many people give up. We like to call it the Harrison way. Superintendent Dr. Andre Spencer says Haynes and his classmates face the same issues found in any inner city, yet the results are atypical. There's no such thing as an advanced placement student. All students can be advanced placement students. One other thing to note. Taylor Stevens teaches more students of color compared to other AP classes across the state. And there are a lot of kids in this class who either came from the English language development program or came from the regular math classes who are now in AP Calculus. Which one is this? Partly due to a grant through the Colorado Legacy Foundation, which provides financial incentives to students and staff. And what's the derivative of sine x? For doing well in AP classes. Hey, I got all of them right. Partly due to something that started way before high school. They let us know that 
college is always the goal from the beginning. Ooh, two more left. In elementary schools like Soaring Eagles, give me one equation that describes what you have here. Teachers focus on making sure every single student keeps up. That it's a system here. It doesn't matter what classroom I would take you in. You're going to see strong teaching. Principal Kelly O'Neill says. Is there another option? Yes. Yeah. Every student is given a chance to excel. When they enter as a kindergarten, you're gathering as much information as you can get about that student and then putting um, a program in place um, that is very specific to their learning deficits. Okay, well, so try a new one then. Every student is given a chance to believe. So we look at the whole spectrum, not just focusing in on lower performing students, but we focus in on all students and how can we make all students high performing. It's like there's a family in this district and um, we all want to see each other succeed. Our administration has very high expectations for us as teachers um, and that pushes us to make our kids do better. Hi guys. That's why when other people are eating lunch, Haynes is working. I'm in three AP classes, um, a lot of extracurriculars, and I work. That's why, despite having the typical socioeconomic problems, every moment kind of counts for me. <laughs> Haynes makes no excuses. I like to challenge myself. I also know that like taking these classes is going to be my way out of, you know, like where I am now. What does D over DX mean? That's why this school and this district show the lowest achievement gap in the state between white students 3x to the negative fourth and students of color. Harrison has a graduation rate of 75 percent or better for Latino and black students. I think it's important that we get out there, we tell the truth, we figure out what the issues are, and we try to fix them. We've grown up in this mixing pot, so we've never seen people as different. You've never seen it as black or white or Hispanic or Asian. It's all been just, we're all people. People facing typical problems, achieving not so typical results. The school's culture is just amazing. With photojournalist Chris Hansen, Nelson Garcia, Nine News. Manual at the heart of it is a family. Kim Desmond attended Manual High School at a time. We would sometimes hang out at the park. When know. people like Brooke Reeves were being bussed in from across town. So my freshman year, the school was actually really diverse. Being able to pull resources from around the city and not just from this neighborhood hugely impacted the education. Busing hugely impacted the city. The way neighborhoods are structured now, the places people decided to live. And it all stems from a lawsuit filed by parents who were tired of segregated and unequal schools. It was the first northern desegregation lawsuit in the country. Laura Lefkowitz is a former Denver School Board member who studied how court-ordered busing tried to make Denver schools more racially balanced and fair. At that time, the black schools had fewer resources, they had the least experienced teachers. So students were bussed away from their neighborhood schools. Like I don't know if our, our doors were that bright when I was in school. <laughs> That's a bright blue. And at places like Manual. I don't think people got the full aspect of how busing impacted our city. It worked and this building thrived with a mix of race and income. Didn't matter if you lived across the park or if you lived across town. I mean we had kids whose families who owned you know, major corporations, and no, it, that wasn't important. I even have a Thunderbolt necklace on right now. Like, I love my school. But Lefkowitz says Denver Public Schools worked to undermine the efforts. The district did not like it. They did not want to be controlled by a judge. And white families abandoned it. More than 30,000 white students fled the city. It certainly changed the population of Denver in terms of its school age population. After more than 25 years of busing students to places like Manual, it was rich with not just race diversity but also culture. Busing um, was stopped. My sophomore year at Manual, I remember coming back that sophomore year and I, I distinctly can remember saying, what happened to all my white friends? I think when he terminated the order, it was, it was like throwing the white flag of surrender on the idea of integration. 20 years after the end of busing. Like, let's address these kids at Manual. Schools like Manual are back to square one. If you're 95% black and Latino, are you a segregated school? The answer is yes. He basically gave up because there, there wasn't enough diversity in the enrollment of DPS to effectively integrate the schools. Lefkowitz says across Denver, 
There are now 74 racially isolated schools with 90% of families living in poverty. These schools are almost uniformly failing. Manual included. We know what the problem is. Segregated schools, low performing, poverty. They say if busing is not the answer. It would have worked if the middle class hadn't abandoned it. The district must find another way to promote racial and socioeconomic balance. I don't know if um, busing is the right model, but I do know that we need to find a model that addresses integration. Because the data shows right now schools are as segregated as they were before busing started. With photojournalist Chris Hansen, Nelson Garcia, 9 News.